Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next War Recap video, and boy was this a close one against Omega Labs, and it came down to percentage, and unfortunately by about half a percent, they got the victory, so hats off to them, uh, was a good war. I will go ahead and take a look at the bases, then get into a few attacks. I am a little bit sick, so uh, I'm going to be a little more low-key today, but anyway, uh, you can see just going through the bases, they were they were pretty phenomenal in our top few bases here, getting the three stars on uh, our two 11s there, and then our top 10s. They had that kind of the gap uh, where their 11 attacks uh, weren't available. Because if you look at these uh, two, one, two, one, their 11s were uh, perfect, but the top 10s couldn't quite uh, get it on our top 10s, uh, being Thor, Jinj, uh, RKH. But anyway, uh, besides that little gap, they got all the nines uh, three-starred. As far as what we did, we were kind of the opposite. We uh, left their top 11s two-starred, but focused our efforts a little more on their uh, mid to low Town Hall 10s. So we made up for their three-stars uh, by taking out their five, six, and seven. Unfortunately, the percentage didn't quite go our way. A little bit of a planning, uh, some issues at the end of the war, trying to get all these attacks coordinated. Uh, but... Just didn't quite have it, so good war to both sides. I wasn't in it, as I've said in the last video, uh, but I definitely had a fun time watching all the attacks. And uh, just looking at the percentage, you know, we had a 91 there, pretty close. Uh, 71, 56, 53, and uh, of course their percentage was a little bit better on the basis they didn't three-star because they won off that percentage. Uh, they had a 56, 54, 98, that was uh, a very close, and then an 80. So the 98 and the 80 tip the scale in their favor. So good job to Omega Labs, uh, part of the Reddit family, I believe. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few attacks. I'm not going to show too many of these three stars because they're mostly uh, Town Hall 11 dips, as is what you see in these close wars. But we'll take a look at uh, number five anyway, because it's still a tough base. We're looking at a pretty much uh, max Town Hall 10 besides like the cannons in some of the expos, so a hard base, and a lot of what we saw were these inferno towers that were uh, in their own compartment with the two tile space all around them. I think that's going to uh, kind of an anti-bowler type layout because you're trying to make it so the bowlers can't reach that inferno because they can only toss over one tile, uh, over two tiles really, the wall counting, so that's three tiles if you count the wall, so they can't reach that inferno. And because of that, um, it makes it difficult, but uh, Juan does a great job dropping down the jump and uh, letting everything into that first Inferno. The king is on it. He'll get it taken out real quickly. Now, a good deal of bowlers do walk around the outside, which typically can uh, make or break an attack because uh, that's the, kind of the one thing that you have to make sure you do is get those bowlers, the bowlers funneled in. But even though they weren't, uh, the, the second jump spell still connects. The king somehow is still up even though it seemed like he was at low health for most of the attack, and he's able to get in there and uh, take out that second Inferno, and that's huge. The quicker those Infernos go down, the better. You can see all those healers are still up. <clears throat> uh, the, the two healers from the bottom are rerouting back to the top, so all that healing power is huge late in the game, especially when uh, nothing is targeting all these troops. They're getting healed back up to full health. Still has the Queen's ability, still has a Rage, and surprisingly, uh, almost all the bowlers that went around the base are still alive, and uh, they're kind of making their way around right here. So more than enough firepower to get through the base. Go times two. As this one's over, goes ahead and drops that rage just to speed things up a little bit. But uh, like I said, crush this base. Awesome attack there. Uh, let's keep moving, though, and take a look at one of our Town Hall 10 on Town Hall 10. Three stars, uh, number seven. And he actually, uh, RKH11 brings five healers, which is something that I usually don't do, and we don't see that often, but it does give that little extra healing boost, even if it is uh, scaled down for that fifth healer. It is uh, not quite as effective as the fourth healer or the third healer, so uh, I think it's only like a 50% or 30%, maybe 50% extra heal. Yeah, 50% extra heal, I'm pretty sure. So uh, it doesn't get the full healing... Uh, power of the fifth healer, but it does enough to ensure that he doesn't have to use any spells on her. Drops down the double poison, 
That's mainly for the balloon, because when you have the golem and the balloon coming out, if that golem gets there first, it can tank for the balloon, which can get a bomb drop off on your queen, and that can be... It doesn't take out a level 38 queen with one drop, but it definitely gets her pretty low. So having the double poison ensures that the balloon goes down. I think one poison, a max poison, typically will get a balloon down, but sometimes things go weird and it doesn't quite path through it on the full diameter. So you got a, a double poison is a, a safe way to do this, especially because typically you don't have that poison when you're you know doing the main part of your attack. There's no time to poison the queen or anything. So. Uh, awesome job there and the queen actually does go up north. I'm not sure if it was intended It probably was because he dropped some minions to funnel her but very sneaky funneling if this was intended because the queen uh, Goes up north and avoids that air defense which could have shot down the healers uh, She meets up with the bowlers and uh, the Valks and together they just wreck the core of this base The healers getting on both the Valks and the bowlers. The rage is keeping everything moving They got to both those infernos very quickly and uh the Valks have already busted through some of these extra walls. This base is pretty much already compromised, and uh, it was a pretty quick rush. Only entered the base like 45 seconds ago or something. So, uh, crushed this base. And I think this shows that sometimes bringing the CC bowlers, even if you're doing a Valk attack, is not a bad idea because it adds some range. A lot of time the Valks get hung up on walls, uh, but the bowlers have that extra range, especially on the second bounce of their rock. And that can get in there and get some defenses that your Valks won't reach for a while. So anyway, go times four because it's just that mortar left up. Everything making its way around. Crush this base. A ton of troops left up. Awesome attack. Okay, I have some uh, great Town Hall 9 action. Uh, a lot of interesting attacks. And I am going to uh, probably save some of these for other videos because I have some uh, attacks that will wor work well for some other videos I'm going to make in the future probably. So... Not going to show some of those, but still, uh, there were some awesome attacks, and we're starting with number 11. Just a nice little Valk attack by Amsterdam, and I like the Queen Walk on this one, because he just comes in from the bottom, and you can see that the, uh, the Queen really going on this route doesn't take a lot of damage. Uh, there is, you know, a little bit of point defense. He does have a rage for her, but for the most part, it's a pretty high value Queen Walk for not that big of an investment. Uh, she's going to get quite a bit taken out, and she's also kind of breaking the funnel for the Valks a little bit, I believe, if that's the direction he comes in. I can't quite remember, but I like how he kind of pre-poisons that area. Uh, he was expecting the uh, CC troops to come out right there, but the Hog actually doesn't get the lure for whatever reason, but still gets a little bit of value out of that poison, kind of softens up those CC troops for the second poison, uh, which is perfect placement. Goes ahead and pops the ability, because there was the Valk, the Baby Dragon, uh, that can do some damage to a queen. And then here comes the king. Uh, this is great. I love how people do this. Dropping the king down to create part of the funnel. Because he can tank and he also can take the place of a few wizards. Uh, which otherwise would be needed for the funnel. So save troop space. Uh, but anyway, a few hogs in here to take out what's in between the queen and the Valks. Uh, the queen kind of busted through the wall right there. But she's getting great value. She'll step up, get a few more defenses. And there's no risk of her going down. Uh, that second jump for the Valks, and then the perfect heal right there. Going to get the Barbs, the Valks, and that's actually a pretty solid value if you can get the Barbs from the King's ability healed up, because a lot of times people don't realize that, but the Barbs do quite a bit if you keep them healed up, and the King definitely summons a lot of them, so another, another great uh, value for your heal spell if you can time it with the King's ability like that. But anyway, had some Hogs to kind of finish off parts this base and uh, awesome attack. You can see how that double giant bomb was triggered uh, very sneakily by the queen walk and then a few hogs sprinkled in to kind of suicide that area. So anyway, uh, worked out real nicely. Go ahead and fast forward and uh, we'll move on to base number uh, 16. Just down a few here. Uh, we're looking at Devin and uh, this one was a interesting attack because it's been a while since we've seen a Zap Quake at Town Hall 9, or at least that I've seen one. And you can see he actually, the Queen is pretty far away from air defenses, so you wouldn't expect a uh, La Luna attack. But keep in mind that the both Expos are on ground only, so that definitely is an incentive to do this. Goes ahead and drops down both those Zaps. Then the Quake right there, I think he was trying to get the Archer Tower too, 
Couldn't quite get it, but not that big of a deal, to be honest. Got the easy C sealer right there. Uh, drops down a giant and the queen to take those out. He's just kind of doing a hero trade right here. Both his heroes for the enemy queen. And I think maybe hoping to get an, a defense or two. Uh, but to be honest, these defenses are kind of set back. So I think pretty much all he's going to get is the queen. But also the CC troops. So uh, for just the investment of that five spell space, a giant and both his heroes, as well as the poison spell, uh, he's taken out what what uh, an air defense, the CC troops, and the queen, which is... Uh, a pretty solid investment there so three air defenses up has four lava hounds and i think like 19 balloons so more than you typically see in just kind of a traditional cold-blooded uh lava hounds attack so anyway comes in here with the balloons the hastes everything moving in uh that first air defense goes down right there the tasks those are being tanked for and look at that one lava hound it soaked up two of those black bombs before it died and both of those went off when it pretty much had no health left. So the black bombs eff effectively did nothing, which is why he still has two uh, almost full health lava hounds going at that last air defense, plus a swarm of balloons. And he was pretty patient. Here, you can see his queen actually is still up. I think the way she passed, she kind of went around and was out of range for a lot of defenses. Still has her ability, actually. So she is doing cleanup because doesn't really need her to take out any of these defenses and uh, still has, like, I think at least one Lava Hound in that group. Yeah, I think maybe just one, but awesome attack. Everything spread out. Had a few wizards for cleanup. Uh, nice attack to Devin. We'll go ahead and go times four as everything goes down, and they kind of go for the king over there. But uh, moving along, let's take a look at two down from here, 18. And this one was a fun one to watch, a Penta La Luna attack. Something that I haven't seen in a while. Another one of these old school air attacks being brought back. And I think it's a combination of the grounded expos, which makes sense. I think more at Town Hall 10. I've made a video on this. I think Town Hall 10, it definitely makes sense. Town Hall 9, I'm not sold. And I'm starting to think maybe it's not the best idea after seeing some of these air attacks. But uh, still, if you guys see this, it's a good thing to do uh, to take advantage of them with an air attack. Drops down the heroes, gets the queen and two archer towers, so pretty solid value there. Gets the bonus of the archer towers, and I guess this is a cleanup attack, I assume, because he knows the CC troops won't run out. It's probably like a golem or something in there, so doesn't have to worry about that. Comes in with a, uh, I think, what's that, one or two lava hounds? I think came in with one lava hound and a bunch of balloons. Kind of interesting, he came at this base in, like, segments, so I... Uh, Comes in there uh, with another Lava Hound, another... I mean, I'm having trouble keeping track of the Lava Hounds, but uh, <laughs> maybe I messed this up. But comes in there with another Lava Hound, another Haste, and a Rage, and some more Balloons. Uh, there, there's that CC Lava Hound, which has quite a few hit points. And really, a, not a lot of, of this base can even target air troops, because remember, he lost the Queen, two Archer Towers, and both those Expos are, can't target the Balloons or anything. So really not a whole lot of things that can even target air troops, which is why he can kind of attack the space in segments. Uh, comes with that last air defense, still has a ton of balloons up, and uh, just basically that Tesla is the only thing left now. So anyway, crush the space, lava pups everywhere for cleanup, was a awesome attack to watch, and uh, yeah, crushed it. Really fun to watch, like I said. So anyway, we'll go ahead and fast forward. There are a few builders huts in the corner, uh, which would have been nice to have some archers for, but I think he wanted to try to squeeze that uh, fifth Lava Hound into his army, so uh, good stuff there. Nice attack to Shrek. Okay, uh, we are looking at one more, number 21, Anthony, and uh, some bowler action, a bowler walk for you guys. Something that I always love to show, especially at Town Hall 9, because I think it's something that uh, should be used more, to be honest. We don't see it as much. People like to throw some bowlers in their kill squad, but I uh, haven't seen a whole lot of bowler healer action just on a bowler walk. So anyway, three healers for the queen. She's doing kind of a small walk here. Uh, this base is really spread out, which allows him to do this because he doesn't have to worry about any kind of concentration of point defense that will force him to uh, have to use a rage or anything. So drop, has that queen go down? The expo is on her now. Uh, here comes one hog for the CC lure. It's just a golem. 
yeah, it'll go over to the queen in just a moment because you don't want your bowlers to have to deal with the CC troops. So it uh, goes ahead and delays the bowler walk until the CC troops are heading towards the queen. And then just a moment, he's already created the funnel. Uh, actually does have that one rage for the queen. And she goes on a wall for some reason. Uh, I think just too far away from the gold mine up there. But uh, under that rage, she will deal with the golem. Meanwhile, has the poison for the king. The bowlers can deal with that king, especially if he's under poison, because he doesn't do enough damage uh, all slowed down like that to really hurt the bowlers. Plus, there wasn't any point defense on him. So uh, luckily, they didn't beat through that wall right there because they were kind of getting the splash damage from the king onto that uh, wall. And that wouldn't have worked out too well if they entered the base. But anyway, they keep going up top, which is great. The sweepers pushing back to healers, keeping them out of range of that air defense. The queen is going to meet up up top. And I made a video on this, kind of the strategy. But what this does is it creates a funnel for your Valks because Valks are north to south troops or south to north or whatever. The point is they go in a straight line. So really, if you just send in a group of Valks into the base, they're going to kind of get themselves surrounded because they're going to carve a hole deep into the base, but they'll be flanked on every side by all the outside defenses. But right here, he just took out all those outside defenses, so it's a straight shot for those Valks. Plus, he has the bowlers, the queen, the healers. He really didn't even lose anything. Uh, all the stuff that he dropped down at the beginning is still up, so he can basically go north to south in this base very quickly, and you can see how many troops he has left up. A few hogs are a nice touch to uh, <clears throat> take out some of these defenses, but a really nice attack and a very cool strategy for these spread out bases at Town Hall 9 uh, worked out real nicely here. Just look at how many troops he has. All these healers all around the base. The bowlers, the king, the valks, the queen, wizards for cleanup, a few hogs. Just crush this base. Very nice attack to Anthony. Awesome stuff there. Uh, but anyway, that's the war, guys. Once again, good job to Omega Labs. They were the better clan in this war, and they really brought it, especially on our top bases right there. Uh, the bowlers were the main uh, instrument of the destruction, so uh, very good job utilizing the bowler, which is very powerful at Town Hall 11 right now. So anyway, uh, good war though to Genesis. We put up a good fight and produced some awesome attacks, which you'll see some more of in upcoming videos. But that's it for this recap. Hope you guys enjoyed the attacks you saw. And stay tuned, as always, for more videos. I'll see you guys later, though. Bye, Sectatron out.